All right, welcome uh, to the virtual college fair. We're super excited to have you here. We have representatives from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and I'll let them introduce themselves in a moment. Um, but just wanted to let you know that as we're on our virtual career fair tonight, um, that when you wanna ask questions, there's a Q&A button and that should scroll across the menu at the bottom. And you can just type in any questions that you have for the presenters here today. Your camera and microphone are off um, because this is Zoom webinar. And so the, um, you're muted, your video is off, so the presenters cannot hear or see anything that you're doing. If you're interested in signing up for more sessions, you can just go to strivescan.com uh, backslash Alaska. And these recordings will be available um, in the next week or so. So stay tuned if you kind of missed one and you want to go back and see it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then uh, should we just, we'll just introduce ourselves as we start presenting. And Kathy, that is to you. Can you guys see that? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm not seeing slides. Let me try again. I'm sorry about that. We tested it and it looked good, but. There we go. Okay, great. I'm going to mute myself. Okay, so you'll be hearing tonight from University of Alaska Fairbanks College of Liberal Arts and the School of Management and eCampus. Next slide. I am Kathy Nava. I am the academic advisor with the College of Liberal Arts. Um, UAF has many different schools and colleges, um, some focusing on engineering, on the natural sciences, computer sciences, um, and the College of Liberal Arts is the largest of all of the schools and colleges. Next slide. Now, just out of curiosity, can you see me or is it just my slides? We can, you can see, see you. me. Um, I would prefer that you only see my slides, but I guess we don't have that option. Okay, so the College of Liberal Arts is the largest, housing more than 20 subject areas and offering 40 degree programs. It's also the most nebulous. The College of the Liberal Arts are not as easily designed, defined as things like accounting or engineering. In fact, the question I'm asked most often is, what are the li liberal arts? And that's a great question. The liberal arts encompass just about everything except math and the natural sciences. The natural sciences explain the world we live in with biology, chemistry, physics, and geology. The liberal arts explore how we live in the world, where we live, and how we interact with each other. Liber liberal arts and sciences include both humanities and social sciences. Next slide. The humanities are subjects that explore how we express ourselves creatively and culturally. The humanities include things like arts, music, foreign languages, English, and philosophy. Learning a second language is not a degree requirement, but it can provide a glimpse into other cultures and their traditions and ideologies. And you also have the opportunity to study abroad. Next slide. The social sciences study how we interact with each other, both as individuals and as groups of people. 
Social sciences include psychology, justice, history, geography, and political science. The liberal arts are those subject areas that explore what it means to be human. And another term you'll hear frequently is interdisciplinary, which means combining or involving two or more academic disciplines or fields of study. And you'll soon realize that many subject areas overlap and are sometimes inseparable. Think about how history, geography, and political science are intertwined or how artistic expression often includes both music and movement or visual effects. Both two and four year degrees have general ed requirements to assure that students are getting a good foundation of knowledge. And these gen ed or GERs are required for both associate and bachelor level degrees. Next slide. In fact, most of the classes you'll take to fulfill gen ed requirements are in the liberal arts. And let me be clear, this is about liberal academics, not political liberals. The GER classes will strengthen your communication skills, develop your analytical and critical thinking, and enhance your creative thought processes. You'll hone your speaking and writing skills while you develop a greater understanding of the world beyond your community. Many students attend college so that they can pursue particular career paths such as teaching, engineering, or accounting. But liberal arts students are not necessarily training for a specific profession. Rather, you're pursuing more generalized knowledge. Liberal arts studies will prepare you for various career choices and provide you with a diverse set of skills that employers are looking for. Next slide. While some of your peers may be focused on a specific career area, such as engineering or health care, your liberal arts education will prepare you for a wide variety of careers. Having a foundation in a broad range of subjects makes you more receptive to new ideas. It builds resiliency, which means as the job market changes, your skill set is more flexible and applicable to a greater range of job opportunities. You'll assemble a broad foundation of knowledge that can be used in a wide spectrum of careers. You might find yourself writing for a newspaper, training newly hired employees, studying an exotic type of bacteria, conducting tours in a foreign land, or creating archives in a museum. Next slide. Within your degree requirements is the opportunity to discover your passion, to customize your degree and make it unique to your own needs and desires. With your liberal arts degree, you're not just building a career, you're building a life. And the flexibility to change your path as those opportunities present themselves. So I'd like to just go over some of the subject areas within the College of Liberal Arts. Um, you'll find anthropology, art, the communication, um, film and performing arts, English, the foreign languages, history, justice, music, um, and all of these classes, oh, and political science, psychology, social work, all of these subject areas. When you look for what can I do with this major, most of them, if not all of them, say you can go into government jobs, you can go into teaching, you can go into a lot of different fields with any of these majors. And so with that, um, as you can see, 
The liberal arts are a set of academic disciplines that include the sciences and the humanities. Um, next slide. Thank you. When you study a liberal arts curriculum, you don't have to have one specific career goal, although you might. Instead, you'll assemble a broad foundation of knowledge that can be used in a wide spectrum of careers. You'll learn to think critically, examine the world around you, communicate effectively, and adjust to changing situations. And many liberal arts programs prepare you to continue your studies into a graduate program. And I think I forgot to mention that CLA, the College of Liberal Arts, has over 90 scholarship funds with multiple scholarship opportunities in each department. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Kathy. Um, my name is Tara Knight. I am the advisor and recruiting coordinator for the School of Management at UAF. And so my job is to help students who are both uh, incoming, so prospective students, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to you more about the different programs that the School of Management offers. But I also help with advising throughout uh, students' college careers. So. I help students with academic planning, and then I also help connect them to any resources on campus that might be useful. So there's my contact information, feel free to reach out. And then I'm also providing the School of Management uh, offices contact information in case, you know, I'm meeting with a student and I can't answer your call when you call. Next slide, thank you, Jessica. Um, so why the School of Management? So there's a number of really neat opportunities in the School of Management, um, but there's also uh, things that we like to highlight. So one of the things that we like to highlight is our AACSB accreditation. And so AACSB stands for the Association uh, to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. And this is the premier global accrediting body for schools of business. Only 1.5% of schools uh, business schools worldwide have achieved this level of accreditation. That means it looks great to prospective employers. It also uh, looks really great if you're wanting to go on to graduate school. Another thing that the School of Management offers is um, flexibility. So all of our programs, with the exception of the finance concentration and the business administration major, can be completed online. Um, we're also a very cost affordable school, UAF is in general, um, but because we also offer all of our programs online, if students ever choose to, let's say, move to California halfway through their program, the really cool thing about online programs at UAF is that all of them uh, will automatically receive the in-state tuition rate. So if you did need to take your degree with you to another state, you would still be able to uh, have that resident tuition rate. We also have a lot of internship opportunities through the School of Management, uh, as well as career and workforce development opportunities. So uh, we're constantly being reached out to by business um, leaders in the community who are interested in establishing partnerships for internship opportunities for our students. Um, and then we also hold events that um, help connect students to uh, potential employers as well. Um, we also have a lot of active student organizations within the School of Management uh, that we are uh, very supportive of. And so um, our student organizations will commonly, not during COVID times, of course, but in pre-COVID times, um, we're commonly traveling for, uh, for part of their student organization uh, duties. Next slide, please, Jessica. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the School of Management offers five different degree programs and I'm gonna go over each one briefly, but if you have questions, just feel free to reach out um, and I'm happy to talk to them, talk to you about them in more detail. So the Bachelor of Applied Management is one of our newer programs. It was started in the fall of 2018. And one thing that we really like to highlight about this program is that um, while it's transfer friendly, 
It also allows students who are interested in pursuing a technical or trade field um, and also who are interested in getting a four year bachelor's degree. So a lot of uh, technical and trade fields, like usually they culminate in some type of associate's degree or certificate program. And those credits don't usually transfer in to fulfill a traditional four year degree program. But one thing that we wanted to make sure to do with this new Bachelor of Applied Management program was to create a pathway for students who are interested in those fields to be able to apply their technical credits towards their major. So students who decide to, let's say, pursue process technology, um, but who are also interested in getting a business degree, they can take, they can transfer in up to 30 credits of their process technology um, credits into the major and have that count towards part of their degree program. Um, but it's, it's a really interesting program. Students can also do this with art. So if you wanted to take a lot of art classes, but you weren't sure if you wanted to major in art, you could also apply the art credits towards your technical area. And so we also offer our, oh yeah, sorry, next slide. Um, we also offer a Bachelor of Business Administration and Accounting program. Um, one thing that we like to highlight about our accounting program is that we have a nearly 100% job placement rate. The reason for this uh, is because accountants are always needed. So um, out of all of our uh, job notifications that we receive from uh, employers in the community. It's usually, um, it's usually requests for uh, accounting uh, majors or accountants. Um, what's great about this program is that there's a lot of internship opportunities with most leading to job offers. We also uh, hold an accounting recruitment week every single year where um, we have different CPA firms come and talk with uh, graduating students and students who are just looking to get more information about uh, their career paths. But it's also a really portable degree program because accountants are needed in all industries. Um, faculty in our program have a lot of professional experience and certifications and we have really high CPA pass rates among our students. Okay, next slide. So we, off, we also offer our Bachelor of Business Administration in Business Administration degree. This is our more traditional business, like this is our more traditional business degree. Um, so what's great about this program is that students are going to get a really broad overview of, and uh, they also get to con have a concentration in uh, one of five areas, but they get a broad overview, a broad foundation of business. So students will be taking economics coursework, they take accounting coursework, and then they take a number of business administration classes as well, in addition to their concentration. Um, our business students consistently score at the top percentiles on the National Standardized Business Exam. And there's also a lot of opportunities for active and experiential learning through this program as well. Um, all of the concentrations, with the exception of the finance concentration, can be completed online. The reason that the finance concentration can't be completed online is because uh, some of the courses in that program include things like the Student Investment Fund. And in that class, students are actively managing a $1.5 million stock portfolio. And so there is um, <laughs> some oversight from the professor is needed uh, in that class, which is why that one, uh, that concentration can't be completed online. But there's just a lot of excellent career opportunities uh, in business administration for, or in, there's a lot of awesome career opportunities for students who major in business administration. We also offer a Bachelor of Security and Emergency Management. Like the Bachelor of Applied Management program, this program is fairly transfer friendly because it also allows uh, lower division emergency services coursework to fulfill part of the uh, major requirements. So let's say you're interested in pursuing a career in fire, in fire service. If you wanted to get an Associate of Applied Science in Fire Science, 
those degrees um, would not typically transfer well into a traditional four-year program. But because the Bachelor of Security and Emergency Management program does have that 21 to 33 credit hour requirement in lower division emergency services coursework, students can transfer their credits in to fulfill part of their major requirements. In this program, instructors have real world hands-on experience and so do our students. So oftentimes a lot of our students are actually retired military and they're bringing in a lot of uh, diverse and unique learning perspectives into the classroom that just provides um, a better learning environment for both instructors and students. This program is also commonly recognized as a nationally as a national leading program for its quality and depending on the review authority it has been designated one two and five. Within this concentration, um, or within this degree program, students also get to choose from six concentrations. And those include things like law enforcement, cybersecurity, emergency management, homeland security, fire administration, and public health management. Next. Okay, and then um, our fifth program is the Bachelor of Sport and Recreation Business. This program was created in the fall of 2018 as well. And so far we do have a 100% career placement with all of our recent uh, graduates working in their desired industry. Um, one of the reasons for that is because our faculty are very closely connected to professionals in the industry. And they commonly are having those professionals come in and uh, present to their students. They regularly hold um, monthly chats about uh, where they, I'm sorry, monthly chats. Uh, they regularly have different professionals in the industry um, present to our students. And that's actually open to all UAF students. Um, and then within the classes, uh, students can also usually get certifications in the industry that's built into the curriculum. Uh, this program also allows for a concentration. Right now, the concentrations include sport management or recreation management. What's really nice about this degree program, though, is that it's a really flexible degree program. So out of all of the degree programs, I would say it's probably the least prescribed in the sense that um, it allows for a lot more electives. So what's great about this program is you can work with me or the program director in order to build a curriculum that's really going to be catered to your academic and professional needs. Next slide. Okay, so I've talked a lot about experiential learning throughout this. Uh, this is just a couple of examples of things that our students do. So in the first um, column to the left, you'll see students and, or I'm sorry, faculty and the dean presenting a check to the winners of the annual Arctic ice competition. In the middle um, is a picture of our, one of our principals of marketing classes running a successful roast and boast event with Northrum Bank. And then I've mentioned the student investment fund before. That's some of our student investment fund students traveling to a finance conference in pre-COVID days. Um, other opportunities that students get to do. So we hold a business leader of the year event every single year and the School of Management students actually put on this event and it's a very large event where um, business leaders throughout Alaska come to attend and we honor a business leader in the state of Alaska. Um, this just gives students hands on experience in project management, marketing, um, uh, managing finances for the event. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for students to put that on their resume. Um, we also have a, a program called VITA where our accounting students help members of the public each spring with their, um, with their taxes. So lots of really great opportunities to start building your resume uh, while you are a UAF student. And so if we can go to the next slide. Yeah. And so um, I also just wanted to include the short video. Uh, it is uh, from current and uh, former students and also faculty just talking a little bit more about the School of Management. So Tara, wave your hand at me if the audio isn't working, but I'm going to okay. play. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I think what I love the most about the School of Management is uh, the willingness of my professors to really work with me, to help me out. I take pride in where our students end up in the professional uh, fields. The business education is uh, extremely, extremely versatile and important. I think school management programs give you a really well-rounded education. It really helped me step out of my shell. The opportunities that school management gives to students is incredible and the people are just outright amazing. Thank you, Tara. That was a fun video. Um, I haven't seen it before. So I am Jessica Armstrong. I'm the recruitment coordinator for UAF's eCampus. And today I'm going to talk briefly about what to expect with an online class from UAF. So I'll, I'll just talk about some of the benefits of taking classes online and what to expect and show you some examples so you can see what it might be like to take an online class and then a few just tips for success. And then we'll have time at the end if you have any questions for us. So as I think it was Tara mentioned, you will pay in-state tuition no matter where you're living. Um, so with eCampus classes, you can take your degree anywhere in the world, which is pretty nice. You can finish your degree. Um, if you have to move out of state. Um, we also have dedicated student support staff here who are here to assist you, whether it's with registration or um, if you have tech support issues or anything like that, we're here to help with that. We're, they're dedicated and used to working with online students. You'll still have access though to like the math lab and the writing center, no matter where you're located. They do online appointments for those sorts of services. So you can arrange a math tutor if you need help in your math class, um, no matter where you're at. We have a little over 400 classes every semester. Um, and then in summer we have less because everyone wants to enjoy the summers here. And then 45, we offer 45 different degree programs that can be completed online from anywhere. And so for the bachelor's degrees, Tara and Kathy were kind enough to kind of lay all this foundation for me. Most of them are from the School of Management and CLA, um, but we also offer like the Bachelor of Arts in Biological Sciences. Um, we're excited to have communications and political science also that are brand new online class or online degrees this semester. And then um, for associate's degrees, we have a number of those too. Those are going to be, um, we have the like, Associate of Arts and Science, which go really well into a four-year degree. You just work with your advisor to um, pick the electives that will go into the degree really well. But then we also have some applied science degrees. And those ones are gonna be more workforce development um, that are giving you really specific job skills like the paralegal studies. It's really specific job skills towards a career. And the undergraduate certificates and occupational endorsements are the same sorts of programs that often they'll build from an occupational endorsement to the undergraduate certificate to the associate's degree. Um, and some of those can go really well into like that Bachelor of Applied Management that Tara talked about. Um, so you can take it all the way from like medical coding on up to a bachelor's degree if, if that's the direction you want to head. Um, you have options to do that and the UAF has the pathways to help you with that and you're, you would just work with your advisor depending on your long-term goals. And some of these degrees build really well into each other, like that bookkeeping technician builds really well into the accounting technician and stuff like that. So we can help you find that next step for you if you want to go further in your education. So there's, this is just a few among the many. Um, that's my picture, Jessica Armstrong. And then we have our academic advisor. We have a terrific IT technician, his name's Brandt, and he's here to help if you're having trouble accessing stuff in your course. We also have 24 seven OIT support. If you, um, let's say you need a password reset or something like that at two in the morning, we have somebody here who can help you with that. Brandt can help more with the, um, I can't access this part of my course or I don't see where to submit an assignment sort of questions because um, sometimes we can actually log into your course and see what's going on. But so we have both. And, and if you call at night and they can't help you, they will refer you to us or your ticket to us in the morning. So we're, we have a lot of different support for you here. 
So now to dive into kind of more of what to expect from an online experience at UAF. Uh, if you've never taken online classes, um, or even if you have, ours might be a little bit different. So our classes are gonna be asynchronous, so there's not gonna be a set meeting time, but they not, are also not self-paced. So usually there's gonna be like weekly assignments that keep the entire class moving through the content together. And a lot of our instructors use active discussion boards or um, projects with two online students that they figure out the time that they can meet, but they can work on a project together. Um, so they use interaction among the students to really um, build a cohort within the class. And uh, a lot of our classes use Blackboard. Some of them use Google Classroom or Canvas. Um, I think the K-12 schools are now using Canvas as well. Um, and so there's a variety of different methods, but we're a Blackboard school. So a lot of our classes will use Blackboard. And something I forgot to mention earlier is that a lot of our students choose to take a mix of online and face to face classes because they find that that works best with their work schedules or their family schedules. So um, you can be on campus, you can live on campus or live off campus and take a couple classes online and a couple classes face to face, however that works for you. You don't have to pick one or the other when you get to UAF if we're offering it, whatever modality works for you. Um, we also offer a bunch of new lab classes, and those ones are pretty cool. We're excited about them because uh, you get a lab kit. You buy a lab kit um, along with your textbook or sometimes instead of having a textbook, um, and then you can do the lab kit experiments at home on your kitchen table, and they're safe for you to do at home, and either you can dispose of your chemicals yeah. at home or you can, some of them, you have to send them to UAF for disposal, but like we just developed um, organic chemistry for fall of 2020, and that's pretty nuts. There's not very many organic chemistry online courses. And the instructors work really hard to make the lab sections relevant to um, the class and to, to get the same learning outcomes as you would have if you were in the face-to-face -face organic chemistry class. So we work really closely with the faculty to help them design their classes in a good way for you so that you get the actual experience you would normally have with a regular class. So just, I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Um, and you can always search for um, UAF Open or Open Education UAF, and that has a whole list of classes that you can kind of go poke around with, and those are free. Um, you, can, you don't get any credit for them, but you can go in there and see how different classes look. You can kind of see, you know, if you're interested in website design, you can see everything that they do during that class for free, um, but you just wouldn't get any credit for it. But that, you can go visit any of those. Again, Open Education UAF, you'd probably be able to find this pretty easily. There's a fish on the screen when you get there. Um, and it's pretty interesting to see the diversity. Um, and I'm just gonna show a couple examples and um, just so you can see kind of what online even looks like. So a lot of our courses will have the, this is a Blackboard example, and so, you would, as a student, you're gonna log in and you would see the schedule coming down the side there. So you know, like, here's my weekly assignments. A lot of instructors will use videos. They'll use this for announcements. They'll post their syllabus so that you know what to expect from your class. Um, and then the, their contact information and stuff like that. Your grades are hosted here as well, um, typically. Some instructors, this is personal finance, um, use more of a blog style. So he's got his weekly units here and he's got um, links up at the top that show like the weekly schedule and stuff like that. It's just a little bit of a different format. It's a little bit less um, structured than Blackboard, but uh, it still has a lot of the same information. We have the Wildlife 101 class, and that has a variety of pretty interesting activities. That's why I include it as one of the examples, like interviewing an agency biologist, going to a game board meeting, moose harvest. I think some of that's pretty interesting. And so this, this class is intended to give you like a wide survey of wildlife careers. And I, I think it would be a pretty interesting class to take, but the instructor also uses videos, there's readings, there's discussions. Um, to try to get you engaged in what does it mean to be a wildlife biologist. Justice 101, that's one of the CLA courses um, for the justice degree. And Gary Kopas has been teaching online for a long time and he uses a lot of videos and discussions as well and tries to get students to kind of connect ideas um, about society and the criminal justice system and um, trying to 
gets you to use different sources and stuff like that. And so he uses a lot of the different tools to get you engaged in the class as well. Um, we have this really cool technology called a learning glass and that's where instructors can write on a board and they, to them, it feels like they're writing on like a regular chalkboard. And for the student, they're looking through this piece of glass at you and you're seeing it like it flips it around. So you're seeing the diagrams they're drawing it as they're drawing them. And it's, it's really nice because they feel more connected to you and you're seeing their face. So you feel a little bit more connected to them. One of the nice things about online classes is you can go rewatch videos too. So like if you're in a math class and you like don't understand a concept, you can go watch the video again with where a face-to-face -face class, you can't do that. The video, the, the time is lost. You've missed it if you didn't capture it in your notes. Um, but a lot of like she, this is a lab class and you get like a, a model to build molecules and stuff like that, a model kit. Um, so that just shows you a little bit of diversity with the online classes. Um, and I just, these are just a couple tips for success with any college class is that, um, but especially with online classes, like we typically say to plan for three to four credits per week per credit on your coursework for, with an online class. Um, so that is including like the study time, the taking tests, the watching lectures, reading, that sort of thing. So if you're taking a three credit class, you need to plan to spend about 10 hours a week on that class, just like you would if you were in a regular court classroom class. Um, so don't think it's gonna be easier just because it's online. That's a perception that sometimes catches students off guard. As I said, they're not self-paced, so the deadlines can be very strict because they can turn off the assignment um, submission button. So sometimes if they say 11.59, it's turned off at 11.59 and you can't submit it after that. So, so just be sure that you're following that. You can see all that information in your syllabus. So at the beginning of the semester, most of our classes use like some syllabus exercise to make sure that you're, you've read it and have like a syllabus test or something like that. So that's your, that's your contract with your instructor. So always read your syllabus really well because that's them telling you what your expectations are. And that's with any college class. A lot of students express the um, regret that they didn't use a calendar to keep track of when assignments and exams are. Um, a calendar will help you keep on track. And um, I like you can do it digitally, you can do a paper calendar, whatever it takes for you with your style. But having a calendar where at the beginning of the semester you write all that out so that you can stay on track for when things are gonna happen. And always, always, whether you're in a face-to-face -face or an online class, contact your instructor if you don't understand something because they are here to help you learn and they don't know often that there's a problem unless you tell them. So I have a cute little video too that I will show you and then I think we'll switch to questions. Jessica, I don't know if it's playing. I'll skip the video. I see the video, but it doesn't. Is sound it like playing it. for you, Kathy? Okay, we'll just skip the video. It. Um, I think that was all. No, oh, and here's my contact information if you have any questions. But if you if you have any, go ahead and throw them in the Q and A for Kathy, Tara, or I. We're all here to help and to answer any questions that you might have. And we appreciate you coming to the presentation. Yes, thank you. Do you have all right? Thank you all so much for your presentation. Um, if there are any questions, just pop those into the Q and A. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna just do a uh, share screen and talk through what's next. Um, thank you, of course, so much for joining us. Once you close out this window, there's going to be a quick survey for you to fill out. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, you can sign up for more sessions, www.strivescan.com backslash Alaska. It's a long, long day. Um, and recordings will be available for this presentation uh, and others, same place that you registered. So we thank you so much for coming. Um, and thank you all. Uh, Kathy, Jessica, and Tara for presenting this evening. Um, and I hope everybody has a great evening. If there's no other questions, I'll end the session. All right. Well, thank Thanks, you so Kim. much for coming and thank you all for thank presenting you. and have a great night. Take care, everybody. Bye.
Bye. Thank Good you. Night.